The Philippines are out of the 2020 Suzuki Cup after losing out to Thailand 2-1 on Tuesday night. I'll take you through the result and what we might be able to take away from it. Also, having now exited at the group stage of this competition in two of the last three editions, is this a worrying trend or just the result of unfortunate circumstance? Let's dive in. The Thais were favorites heading into this match and they certainly played like it, dictating tempo and possession of the ball. But the Philippines weren't making it easy. No, they were far from generous on the evening. In fact, it needed a goal of the highest magnitude in order to break the deadlock. Tirasil Dangda with an exquisite finish. Mm. Mm. Even as a Filipino, you have to appreciate the immense level of difficulty it required in order to finish that move off. In the 25th minute, Tirason Bunmatan broke free on the left flank and rifled a ball with plenty of pace into the box. Tirasil Dangda was able to get in front of his marker and meet the ball on the half volley with his left foot and smashed it into the corner. Unstoppable incredible 1-0 to the ties they took that lead into half time and patrick reichold emerged in the second period with a restoration of hope for the philippines able to take advantage of a rare mistake from the back line of thailand off of a set piece he pounced on the ball and made it 1-1 here we go game on for the Philippines. However, those hopes were extinguished ever so painfully in the 75th minute when Tirasil Dangda stepped up to convert a penalty, which was given away by Amani Aguinaldo. You could debate about whether or not it should have been given. Uh, was the contact light? Was it unfortunate that he stuck his leg out? Should he have been sticking his leg out there? These are all questions surrounding the incident but nevertheless Amani Aguinaldo called for the foul and Dangda able to convert making it 2-1 and just a little bit too far for the Philippines at that point. Heartbreaking for the Philippines especially for Kevin Ray Mendoza who was actually pretty close to the strike of Tirasil. Uh, Kevin Ray Mendoza just wow continuing the streak of incredible goalkeepers for the Philippines. He was very impressive in this one, pulled off some great saves and particularly impressive in the last three matches with the use of the ball with his feet. So we have another keeper on our hands here, guys. Credit to the Ascals, they never gave up. Even with the lack of preparation heading into this competition, they were able to overcome all of these factors and really play their hearts out. But ultimately, they felt just that little bit short but as a fan uh, all you can ask for is for the players to give their all and the Ascals certainly did that. So a well-deserved victory for the War Elephants and the best of luck to them in the next round but as the Philippines what can we take away from this result? What jumps out at me is that tight games are decided by fine margins. And in this case, we saw a moment of brilliance from Tirasil Dang that set the tone for Thailand. But also, what we saw was Thailand were just that little bit sharper, that little bit quicker, that little bit fitter, that little bit more composed. And these are all a result of better preparation on their end. And with our preparation being on the opposite end of the spectrum, you could tell that there were just a few loose passes, a few moments where focus wasn't there. And these lapses, when compounded over time, are enough for a result to go one way or the other. Of course, you can point to COVID as the reason for this lack of preparation. There was a huge strain placed on the squad, especially here in the Philippines where access to training was extremely difficult. There was no domestic league to be had on top of the fact that there were late pullouts from the squad and little disputes with clubs not releasing their players for national team duty. With COVID expected to be a factor next 
next year and maybe the year after that, how do we deal with assembling the squad more effectively moving forward? With our ideal squad composed of players playing across Europe and Asia and different continents around the world, is there a way to ensure that we are able to get them all together for a training camp if needed? If it's possible, then we won't have any issues. But if not, then are there any alternative solutions to this current predicament? Should we have a local pool that we tap into? Should we be expanding the ASCALS development team if that is the case? These are some questions that the ASCALS will need to answer in the coming months. And I'm going to be very interested to see how they navigate the tricky period ahead. But props to our players. We are miles ahead of where we were 10 years ago, but the problem is, and the challenge that we face is that our rivals remain ahead of us. How do we bridge that gap? How do we make it so that we are ahead of them in five years time and not playing catch up as we currently are? What's it gonna take to overtake Thailand and Vietnam? I'd love to hear what you guys think. However, it's the immediate future of the ASCALs that we should be placing the most importance to at this point in time. And it continues on Saturday night as the ASCALs take on Myanmar in our final outing of the 2020 Suzuki Cup. There's little bearing riding on this game, but it's a huge opportunity, especially for the younger members of the squad, to get under the bright lights and to acclimate themselves on this big stage that we hope they'll be excelling in soon one last game so let's get behind the boys and let's hope we end this campaign on a high and that's it for me my name is jing hamlang if you like this video please do like it and consider sharing it to a friend uh, please do subscribe to the youtube channel i really do appreciate all the support you've been throwing my way and i look forward to seeing you in the next video Peace.